Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Raphael Varan intends to head straight for Manchester after his current holiday. Raphael Varan's move edges closer as a swap deal is being discussed. Man United are willing to offer Paul Pogba or Donny van der Beek as part of the deal for Raphael Varane. Sky Sports said yesterday that Man United have been given permission to approach Raphael Varane and we are negotiating the personal terms. Man United are close to agreeing personal terms with Rafael Varane. Real Madrid and Man United are €5 million Euros apart in the valuation for Varane. Man United have submitted a maximum offer of €39 million for Varane. Raphael Varane wants a move to Manchester United. He recently said we'd been given the green light. Real Madrid have given Varane permission to negotiate a departure from the club. He said not so long ago that Man United were 12 million short of Real Madrid's asking price for Varane, but we hope to get him for around 50 million pounds. Obviously, if Pobre or Van der Beek's part of the deal, it will be less. There's a very good chance that Varane is going to be our third signing of this summer transfer window. Varane's been a long-serving player at Real Madrid. He's been with them for like 10 years. He's made 360 appearances in all competitions. And he's won like 18 major honours with Real Madrid. So he's got a good pedigree as a player. Real Madrid got Varane from Lens back in 2011. His current contract with Real Madrid expires next year. Last season, we, not last season, sorry, Real Madrid, sorry, offered Varane a renewal contract offer, but Varane rejected it. We went in for Varane 10 years ago under the Sir Alex Ferguson era. But he is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. Now, Eduardo Camavinga is another player that Manchester United want to sign. Fabrizio Romano said the other day that Man United could make an official bid for Camavinga in the coming days. And he mentioned that Man United are serious about Camavinga. And he said Man United are the front runners for Camavinga. It's said that Man United and Rennes both remain in negotiations for Camavinga. 
He said Renz had made a bid of just over eight point four million for Cam of eight point four million, sorry, for Midland midfielder. Jens Kajusti as a potential replacement for Camavinga. Solskjaer wants to make around four signings in this summer transfer window. I'm expecting Man United to enjoy a very good summer transfer window because I am very convinced that Solskjaer is going to get all the players he wants to recommend in. So far, we have made two signings in this summer transfer window. We brought Tom Eaton in on a free transfer from Aston Villa and we brought Jadon Sancho in from Borussia Dortmund. This summer transfer window is Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. But it's about time that Solskjaer got the backing he deserves. Because he wasn't backed enough for such a long time. Just before the summer transfer window opened, it said Solskjaer had been given a 150 million transfer budget to buy around four or five new players. And our board said they'll back Solskjaer with summer signings plus a new three year contract despite the Europa League final loss to Villarreal last season. Uh, I'm expecting Man United to offload quite a few players in this summer transfer window, so reflecting on that will generate money. Solskjaer's ambition for next season is to win the Premier League title. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, which is eight years ago now. You know, next season is going to be massive for Solskjaer and he is aware of that. You know, next season Solskjaer's decision making has got to improve because so far in a lot of the games he's managed at Man United he's been tactically naive. Uh, next season, I'd say Solskjaer's got to win a trophy if he is to remain Manchester United manager because he's not yet won a trophy. You know, we haven't won a trophy since 2017, which is like four years ago now. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. You know, next season will be Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager because at the moment he's endured two full seasons. And he's been in charge of the club for like 30 months. It's almost 31 months, which is over two years. I am surprised that Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager, especially with the loss to Villarreal in the Europa League final last season. But the reason he is still Manchester United manager is because he's a club legend. That's what's basically saved him. Disregarding him being a club legend, I can almost assure he wouldn't have been here now. We adore Solskjaer though, with him being a club legend. I think Ollie is our best manager since Ferguson. Because in certain aspects he has brought consistency back. You know, there's United fans that are Ollie in, there's United fans that are Ollie out. 
I think Ole needs more time. He does deserve at least next season. I can assure that Solskjaer is not the long-term manager for Man United. And I think a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. Like I said to you, I do have my concerns about Ole. But there's also quite a lot of things I've got to credit Ole for as well. I think Solskjaer has done a good job to say the current squad he was left with when he got appointed in as Man United manager. I didn't expect him to do as well as he has done, so in that aspect, I am shocked. Uh, when Solskjaer got appointed in as Man United manager, he knew it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the club through thick and thin, and he knew he had a lot to do when he came in. Uh, something else I've got to credit Oli for is that he's more or less given everybody their chances to express themselves, because he said when he got appointed in as Man United manager that everybody would get their chances to express themselves, including the young players. You know, I like the way Solskjaer develops the youth. Um, he has made good signings as Manchester United manager. Uh, Solskjaer has spent over £300 million now. Must have brought a good 14, 15 players in. He's got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's come in. He knew he had to do that. In Solskjaer's first full season, got us to three semi-finals and got us a third place finish. Um, did quite well in a few aspects in his second full season. Got us to the Europa League final, got us to the FA Cup quarter final, the EFL Cup semi-final. Got us a second place finish last season. Um, we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for such a long time so they are the positives we appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019 um, Oli obviously hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. Uh, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. He enjoyed two spells at Mulder, and before Mulder, he was at Cardiff, and his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. He only enjoyed a short tenure with them. But uh, when we have been inconsistent, not all of the blame has stemmed from Ole. Obviously, he's been accountable for certain things. You know, like I said on my other videos, I've criticised Solskjaer a lot during his managerial tenure at Man United, but I've had my reasons behind it. Like I've said to you, our board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for a long time. You know, if you've noticed, a lot of United fans have been demanding the Glazers out. A lot of United fans were protesting against the Glazers at Old Trafford towards the end of last season. Because the Glazers have put us in so much debt. The Glazers have been at Manchester United for 16 years. They bought the club for five hundred million back in two thousand and five. Don't forget, on the fourth of June, which was last month, Joe Glazer attended a fans forum. His first attendance in what fifteen, sixteen years, and don't forget, he promised Manchester United supporters that Solskjaer will get the funds that are available. Just wait there a sec.
Uh, Woodward, obviously, he's been one of the biggest problems at the club for a long time. Uh, we know that Woodward is leaving Manchester United. You know, Woodward has had like a 16-year association with the club. Um, Ollie is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. Because we've sat three managers since Ferguson. We sat Moyes, we sat Van Gaal, and we sat Jose Mourinho. And we're not even really known as a sacking football club. I think we've spent over £1 billion on players in the last eight years, so I think wages are included. Must have brought a good 40, 41 players in now. You know, under the David Moyes era, we brought Fellaini and Juan Mata in. Um, under Louis van Gaal era, we must have brought a good, what, 15, 16 players in, something like that. Uh, under Van Gaal, we brought Marcel in, we brought Damien in, we brought Rojo in, we brought Memphis Depay in, we brought Schneidlin in, we brought Sebastian Schweinsteiger in, we brought Di Maria in, brought Ander Herrera in, brought Romero in under Van Gaal as well. Uh, I think we brought Victor Valdez, in, Victor Valdez in under Van Gaal. So yeah, they are a lot of the players we we brought in under Van Gaal. Don't know if I've mentioned them all. Um, under Jose Mourinho, we brought what like eleven players in. Obviously, Jose Mourinho brought the likes of Lukaku in. He brought Sanchez in, I think. He brought Matic in. He brought Pogba in. He brought Bae in. He brought Lindelof in. He brought Lee Grant in. He brought Fred in. <laughs> he brought the low in. So, they are a lot of the players that Jose Mourinho brought in. And Solskjaer, he's brought a good, what, 14, 15 players in, like I said. You know, in the summer of 2019, he brought Daniel James and Juan Pesaka and Harry Maguire in. In January 2020, he brought Bruno Fernandes in. And Odi Nagala went on loan. Nagala left in January this year. Uh, last summer, Oli brought Edison Cavani in, Donny van der Beek, Alex Tellez, Facundo Palestri will only in January in a mad dialogue triore. Uh, last summer, we've got four of those players on deadline day. And in this, this summer chance for window so far, we've brought Tommy in, in and Jaden Sancho. Uh, we've only won four trophies since Ferguson retired. That was the FA Cup under Van Gaal. And the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield under Jose Mourinho. Now, the players that could leave Man United in this summer transfer window. Uh, Paul Popper, uh, he could be leaving. Reports from France said 
that Paul Pogba will decide on his future this week. Foot Mercato said that Paul Pogba wants to join PSG this summer. Man United have set the asking price for Paul Pogba is it's fifty million pounds. Says Man United could demand four players as part of the Paul Pogba swap deal with PSG. PSG have stepped up their chase. Julian Lorne said that PSG are considering a move for Pogba and Fabrizio Romano said the other week that PSG are interested in signing him. PSG have already made contact with Paul Pogba's representatives. Not so long ago though, Mino Riola held talks with PSG's president. PSG wants to partner Pogba alongside Juan Yardem in their midfield. And whilst the Euros was on, Kim Pempe come out and says that Pogba would be welcome to PSG. Paul Pogba's current contract expires next year because last season we triggered that one year extension on his contract. <sighs> He said, um, we fear losing Pogba on a free transfer. Sky Sports News said at one point that Man United were in ongoing talks with Pogba's representatives over a new contract and it said we wanted to make Pogba the Premier League's highest paid player with a new five-year contract worth £104 million. Uh, Solskjaer did say, though, he's hopeful that Pogba will stay and sign a new contract. Pogba is an imperative player. In the last couple of months of last season for us, he produced his best performances. At one point last season, he was out with a thigh injury for a while. Paul Pogba, though, has had a long-running transfer saga, you know... He hasn't only been linked with PSG, he's been relentlessly linked with Real Madrid. He's been linked with his former club Juventus. Barcelona and Inter Milan have been in for him before. Mino Riola uh, did a lot of talking last season. He made the announcement back in December last year, saying that Paul Popper's career at Man United is over. He did mention that he was unhappy. And he has to leave and he's got no intentions of extending his contract. Oli was furious with Mino Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. A uh, few other things he said last season that he had no intentions of destabilising his client's season. And he made an admission saying that he was working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence. He also said that he doesn't give a fuck if he doesn't take another play to Man United as long as his clients are happy. And he criticised Sir Alex Ferguson for forcing Pogba out of the club when he was younger. And also last season he says that Pogba wants to win trophies at Man United or at another top European club. He did say that his future is still in doubt. Um, Pop has enjoyed five seasons at Man United since he rejoined. He's our most expensive signing at the moment because we paid £89 million for him and so far he's won three trophies at the club. That's the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield. To Popper's credit, I thought he enjoyed a good tournament with France. He does really well for his country. Uh, there's a good chance that we're going to offload Donny van der Beek in this summer transfer window. Uh, van der Beek has only endured one full season at Man United. 
He's made like 36 appearances for us in all competitions, but most of them appearances have come from the bench. Uh, there's been a few clubs interested in him, by the way. Uh, like I mentioned, it said the other week that Real Madrid wanted Van der Beek on loan as part of the Varane deal. And we're willing to offer him as part of the Varane deal, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, it said Inter Milan wanted him on loan. Um, at one point, it said he wanted to join Barcelona to end his Man United misery and... Not so long ago, Arsenal made contact with us over the future of Van der Beek. We got Van der Beek last year in a deal worth £40 million for my axe. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025. And he's versatile, he can play in three different roles. Uh, Brandon Williams, he's going out on loan to Southampton. It's the right decision to put him out on loan to gain him more experience and to get him a lot more opportunities because Williams seldom plays for us. He's our third choice left back. Williams made 14 appearances last season. I think only five of them were starts. But the season before last, Williams made 36 appearances. So he got given a lot of chances, but that's only because Luke Shaw had a couple of periods out with injury. Phil Jones, um, I want us to offload him in this summer transfer window because he's always been inconsistent. Plus, he doesn't get in our 11 and he was injured for a while. Jones is the only outfield player that's still here from the Ferguson era. Jones has endured 10 years at Man United. Uh, Tuan Zebe, he's going out on loan. Uh, Diego De Los leaving, he was out on loan with AC Milan. We'll be looking to get rid of Andres Pereira permanently as well. He was out on loan with Lazio. Uh, Jesse Lingard, I think he's leaving Man United. Uh, West Ham want him. Uh, Lingard was out on loan with West Ham last season and he made a fantastic impact. I think we want around £25 million for Lingard. Lingard's current contract with us expires next year. Uh, the other week, though, it said Man United offered Lingard a new three-year contract worth £130,000 a week. And Lingard actually told Solskjaer in a meeting that he wants to stay at Man United, but obviously he's demanded regular game time. You know, the reason we loaned Lingard out back in January was because he got frozen out of our squad. You know, De Gea, it's possible we'll offload him in this summer transfer window, but I don't think we will. I think he will remain at Man United for next season. If we are to... Offload him, we'll put him out on loan. I don't think we'll get rid of him um, permanently. Because it recently said De Gea could be loaned out for next season to make room in the goalkeeping department because De Gea's future is now in doubt with the arrival of Tommy and so too is Dean Henderson's. But De Gea's come out and said that he's determined to fight for his future. And I'm expecting now to hold talks with Solskjaer over his future because the Euros are now finished. ESPN said that De Gea is unsure on Solskjaer's final decision. But De Gea said he's convinced he'll st stay at Man United and be Solskjaer's number one for next season. De Gea's been long serving. He's enjoyed 10 years at the club. You know, he's been with us since the Ferguson era. And De Gea's had eight good years out of the 10 years he's been with us. Because in the last couple of years, he's made too many mistakes. So, reflecting on that, he's been a liability. But a few years ago, was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care, God bless. See you all again very, very soon.